So here's a little look into my shipping station, basically. Uh, it's where I keep all of my products, or most of them anyway. And this is a storage unit that I got at Ikea. And I got those, those two little boxes at Ikea as well. And those shelves as well. They, they came separate, but uh, made, were made for this shelving unit. So I keep basically everything in here and yeah so top drawers i keep some keychains second drawers i keep some more keychains oh boy keep some lanyards more lanyards oh boy um everything looks really messy but i swear it's organized here i keep other uh, keychains. These these are all keychain boxes. These are how I organize them at conventions. Um, and I never, I ne I didn't take them out of the boxes yet. It's been a year since my last convention, but that's okay. Um, I think they're better organized like this anyway. Um, but they're also really useful for traveling to conventions. I have these. Like this is my box of Critical Role charms, and they're all labeled. They have little dividers, so, you know, they're all very neatly organized in there. And I can find them easily because of the nails on the top. A lot of people ask me where I got this. And it has, a, it has other organizational stuff in it. And I got this at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. I got these at Harbor Freight. My point is you should look at hardware stores for organizational stuff because it is usually a lot higher quality and cheaper than craft store organizers. So I would suggest it. Um, moving on, these are actually more keychains. I'm shocked, I know. And then these are stickers and all of these stickers are organized kind of see them but yeah I love stickers so I also cover the boxes and stickers my organizational method probably mostly makes sense to me only but that's okay because I'm the only one working here these boxes in a pack of 10 on Amazon for like ten dollars or something I've gotten similar ones at uh, Michael's I only started selling stickers recently like in 2020 so I got these on Amazon instead of going to an actual store and buying them and then down here I have pin back buttons um, these are also organized into their own little things and these are as well um, another thing where probably I'm the only one who noticed my organizational method but that's okay there's some bags of them too um because sometimes i just don't have room and then here are my prints i'm not gonna bother getting these out because it's kind of precariously organized anyway but these are mini prints in here and large prints in here and they kind of have little tabs with their names on it although these are kind of out of date but that's okay. I'm using a box that I got my prints in to hold them in. And then here, my, my bags that I put the prints in to protect them during shipping and when I'm at conventions. Um, and then also my candy bag charms are in here, but they're like the, the second quality ones. And then in here, even more stuff. You know, not very exciting. More candy bag charms and defective lanyards, basically. Stack of boxes uh, are all my slasher snacks candy bag charms. Uh, I don't really have a good place for them, so I'm keeping them in the boxes that they came in. And they're just labeled on the top so I can look through them easily. Then finally, I have this little, this little thing and it has all my face masks I made in it. 
Uh, so top one is my witchy ones and bottom one is my wrestling one. And then my last two wrestling sweatshirts that I made last year and I haven't sold these last two yet. So if you're interested, they're on my Etsy and my Shopify. Okay, time to pack up some orders. I like to pack my 3D candy bag charms in these boxes because I found out that putting them in bubble mailers makes them super prone to popping. They also get very fragile in the cold weather and it's been very cold here recently, so packing them in boxes lessens the chance for them to get damaged in the mail. Next, I'm packing up just a normal keychain. I always include a business card as well as a little sheet to explain to people that there's a protective film over the charm and it should be peeled off before use. I used to get a lot of questions asking why my charms have scratches on them, but it was always the protective film without scratches, so putting this note in seems to have helped out a lot. Here's a bigger order with a keychain, enamel pin, and two stickers. I don't like putting too many plastic bags in one single order, so I like to consolidate as many things as possible into the same bag. I eventually want to move towards not using any plastic, but it's tough because my manufacturers package everything in plastic bags, and I don't just want to toss those out, so I try my best to reuse them as much as I can. I also like to reuse cardboard boxes to make sticker packaging, which prevents them from getting bent or bumped around when shipped with other items. When I'm packing mini prints, I also like to reuse cardboard boxes for stability. I generally use cardboard mailers specifically designed for shipping paper goods like prints or photos, but recently I ran out and I haven't had a chance to get more. Making my own cardboard folder to put inside a bubble mailer is the next best thing though. I got some new merch in the mail. I ordered a bunch of new stuff right before the Lunar New Year celebration started in China, so most of my stuff was delayed in arriving to me, but the company that makes my candy bags and iridescent charms were actually able to ship them out before they went on vacation. Unboxing new merch is always so fun. First thing I see are restocks of my Slasher Snacks charms. These have been really popular recently, which is exciting. Next up has more restocks, but also a brand new design. This is from my upcoming Halloween collection, which I was sadly a little bit behind on releasing. But I still think the pieces are very cute and hopefully will still be cute even though Valentine's Day is over. This third box contains even more restocks and also another new design. This one is for my upcoming Metal Gear Solid merch release. I've actually been meaning to make this charm for months, but never got around to doing it, so this seemed like a perfect time to finally draw it. Finally, the rest of the order contains my iridescent charms. Most of these are restocks, but I also made some new Metal Gear charms that will also be part of my Metal Gear release next month. I really love making these iridescent charms because I just think the acrylic is so pretty and I love how the light shines on it. Usually these keychains come with attachments already on them, but the Metal Gear ones I'm putting on special iridescent keychain attachments and I'm really excited about those.
Recently, I've been feeling a little down and not really wanting to do anything, so I decided to push myself and draw a new button. I also wanted to do fan art of the new Resident Evil game, so I took this opportunity to do that as well. I really love Resident Evil and I'm honestly so excited to see so many people are drawing the new villain character because I usually don't see too much Resident Evil fan art, so I'm really excited to see more of it. This video is actually sped up 3000%. The full time I took was about an hour and a half, and this is shortened down to about four minutes. I generally don't do everything in one sitting, and I usually like to do a bunch of sketches all at once and then come back to them one at a time, but in this instance I really just wanted to sit down and finish something completely in one sitting. Also I like to draw at a really steep angle and at a really high elevation, so it can be hard to get a camera at the right angle to film my screen. I want to try this differently next time so you can see more of my screen and hands drawing in less of a awkward angle. <laughs> After finishing all the drawing and color adjusting in Clip Studio Paint, I like to take my buttons into Photoshop and do final tweaks. In this case, I put an outline on her hands and then a different one on her body to make the hands stand out a bit more. I also cleared the background so that it wouldn't waste ink when I went to print it out. Finally, time to actually make the buttons themselves. I wanted to try out both holographic and matte glitter finishes. First, I cut out a basic square shape on the button paper, and then I cut out the same exact shape on the laminate. The laminate has a grid pattern on the back which makes it really easy to cut exact sizes and shapes. I carefully peel the backing off the laminate and then apply it to the printed button. Even when I'm really careful, I sometimes still get bubbles in my lamination. So I take a bone folder and press all the bubbles out of it. This gets the button really smooth and flat. Next, I cut the outline of the artwork and finally it's ready to press into the actual button. Next, I'm going to do the exact same process with the holographic laminate.
This one actually applied much easier for some reason. No bubbles on this one. Some people like to apply the laminate to the entire sheet of buttons all at once, but I'm personally not good at doing this and I often get really big bubbles in it. I would rather take more time up front to get less defects in the end, so that's why I do it this way instead. Next, it's finally time to actually press the buttons. I have a heart-shaped button maker that I got from AliExpress a few years ago. It was a very big business expense because it was pretty pricey and the shipping cost a ton because it's very heavy as well. But it was worth it in the end because I have made and sold tons of these heart buttons both at conventions and online. Someday I also want to get the star shaped button press. The first thing to do is to put the top metal shell into the proper die like so. And then you put the artwork on top of that. You turn it around and then you put the back part into its proper die as well. And next you just press down on both sides And you have a finished button. It's very easy to do. If you're making buttons without a laminate on top of them, you'll also need to add a plastic mylar layer on top of the artwork layer. But I don't need to do that for these, so I didn't include that step. And that was basically how my February went. February was kind of a kind of a chill month for me. I did a lot of work in January so that I wouldn't have to do too much in February. You know, that's fine with me. <laughs> but um, it was a lot more boring secretarial work instead of fun art drawing stuff. And always tons of packing orders. I do that so much. Yeah, so in March, I'm gonna be doing a lot more drawing work because I think I mentioned this before, but I'm trying to get into a new cycle of putting out new releases into my store once per month. So back on the drawing grind starting in March. I'm also hopefully getting back into the swing of Twitch streaming. I, I've been streaming off and on for about a year, more off than on, I will say. Um, but yeah, so if you'd like to check out my Twitch channel for more uh, art stuff, I do a lot of drawing on Twitch and also talking about manufacturing processes and stuff like that. So check out my Twitch channel. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning into the studio vlog. I'm hoping to start making a lot more YouTube content in the future, in the upcoming months. So if you'd like to hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. And if you liked the video, please feel free to leave it a like and a comment if you'd like to. Uh, that would be amazing, but no pressure. And yeah, so hopefully I will see you in the next video. So bye. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>